Hey everybody, Matty here with Altcoin Buzz. Happy Friday. Today we are discussing all about Ethereum. Bitcoin, as we all know, was the first ever cryptocurrency and the disruptive tech led to the emergence of an entirely new asset class. But while Bitcoin was the first, admittedly, many of the crypto assets that have come after have been specifically designed to solve many of the problems of the Bitcoin protocol or to expand on what cryptocurrencies are capable of. And so today we look at Ethereum, which was among the first attempts to build a platform for smart contracts that relies on a native crypto asset, Ether, to power it. And now we have over 359 Ethereum-based projects, including mega corporations. And just some of the heavy hitters on this list includes companies like Nike, Barclays, TD Ameritrade, FedEx, Microsoft, Intel, Ubisoft, Amazon, American Express, Samsung, McDonald's, and many more. 2019 is behind us, and as we look ahead to 2020, we look at the successes and the developments in the DAP space, courtesy of DAP Radar, and we discuss the statistics of the top DAP blockchains, including Ethereum, EOS, and Tron. Don't forget as well to stay tuned to the end of this video for information about our upcoming giveaway. We are giving away a cold wallet, a crypto tag Zeus starter kit, specifically tomorrow in our January 18th video. Before all that, however, let's take a look at the market, which is doing very well on this Friday. We are at $245 billion, just under $245 billion, and Bitcoin is up at nearly $9,000. We asked the question yesterday, when are we going to get to $9,000 in our community tab? And many of you commented that basically it's coming in the days ahead, possibly this week, and you may well be right. Right now, Bitcoin sits at $8,911 with a dominance that has fallen slightly 66%. Yet again, we're seeing the altcoins soaking up the lion's share of the incoming money that is entering the market. Adam Cochran here on Twitter. You may have heard a crazy claim that, quote, no one really builds on Ethereum and that, quote, all the products being built on Ethereum are paid for by the Ethereum Foundation or consensus. Well, here are 359 reasons why that is wrong. Let's start with the mega corporations. And he lists some of those names that I mentioned earlier, including Nike, including Barclays, including FedEx and American Express and Samsung and Ubisoft and Amazon and others. On newsbtc.com, over 359 companies are building the future on Ethereum. And this is something that goes back to a video from probably a couple of weeks ago now. I talked about the possibility that Ethereum could really dwarf the value of Bitcoin, not in terms of Ethereum's market cap, but in terms of the value that companies would put onto its network. And I think that is more and more likely really with every day that passes. And that's because over 350 companies are now building on the Ethereum protocol. And given how how extensive the list is, it's really impossible to list them all. However, the full breakdown can be found on Adam Cochran's Twitter feed, which we looked at just a moment ago. It's a very eye-opening list and really sells the fact that not only are many of the world's biggest brands building on Ethereum, but also shows just how much potential the asset holds in the future. Trustnodes.com is talking about how Gavin Anderson is now pivoting towards Ethereum. Gavin is pictured here on the right and is one of the earliest Bitcoin developers and one of very few who can communicated by email with Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin's inventor. Well, Gavin now appears to be focusing primarily on Ethereum's ecosystem. Quote, what is better than be your own bank? Well, be everybody's bank. I've been pleasantly surprised at the ease of use of Coinbase wallet plus compound plus Uniswap, he said back in September of 2019. And the real apparent debut of this Anderson pivot, however, might be a recent public statement he made on Ethereum's new privacy dApp called Tornado. Tornado utilizes a simple idea that arose early last year, whereby through very advanced cryptography, you can turn a smart contract into a black hole of sorts, as the smart contract itself kind of keeps accounts of interactions within the smart contract. So Tornado is a bit more advanced, as unlike Aztec linked above, it hides who is transacting in addition to amounts sent and received according to Roman Semenov, a Tornado developer who describes himself as working on ZK Snarks and the Plasma implementation for Ethereum. And here's another very strong reason why Ethereum is going to succeed and has so much potential. The DeFi network and that entire sector, in fact, thrives in both bear and bull crypto markets. Here on CryptoBriefing.com, DeFi protocols are proving their value after providing profit-making opportunities during diverse market conditions. Protocols through rallies and through troughs. From the 10th of January to the 15th, Ethereum rose roughly 21% against the dollar. Over the same period of time, value locked in DeFi went from $650 million to $796 million. 
The case for success in bull markets is a little bit more evident in prolonged bull markets. Speculators typically use their Ethereum as collateral to take loans and hoard more Ethereum. However, opportunities in this space also very much exist during bear market conditions. As I mentioned, bull markets tend to create exuberant sentiment within the market, leading to greater growth, of course. But for investors with an appetite for risk during corrections, there are still opportunities. Here's an example out of the R Network publication on how DeFi protocols manage to turn a bear market into an opportunity. Alex Kroger, a data scientist for Zero X, revealed in the newsletter that slippage on the platform was minimized as the market turned downward. And typically, market downturns are accompanied by a reduction in liquidity and an increase in slippage. So this is a rather unexpected finding. And in that very same report, Denise Omer from Kyber Network indicated that Kyber went from $70 million in volume in 2018 to $380 million in 2019. One would expect expect the major chunk of this to come in Q1 and Q2 when sentiment was soaring. However, 64% of that volume actually came in Q3 and Q4, showing robust growth even during a bear market. And finally, on altcoinbuzz.io, we take a look at a recap of DApp's decentralized applications in 2019 with DApp Radar. Article here by Ezekiel, an overview of developments on the Ethereum, Tron, and EOS platforms. Ethereum, writes Ezekiel, is still the top of the crop in many areas. Its user growth, number of active decentralized apps, and value all top the charts. Daily active unique wallets across the Ethereum DApp ecosystem rose 118%, and daily value in US dollars went up 166% in 2019. Ethereum also remains the only blockchain that successfully nurtured dApps across the four main categories, those being decentralized finance, DeFi, exchanges, games, and gambling and high risk. 2019 was therefore a very successful year for the Ethereum DApp ecosystem. With DApp Radar's new token tracking analysis, the daily value of the DApp ecosystem amounted to over $10 billion. And here are some statistics worth remembering. Unique daily active wallets increased 118% to over 19,000 in 2019. Games and marketplaces made up 50% of the total daily active wallets, and the user numbers rose by 195%. Gambling and high risk activities reached 22%, which is an increase of 78%. Exchanges made up 20% of the total user numbers, increasing by 26%. DeFi amounted to 6% of total users, but this was a staggering 529% growth. And finally, the total value of Ethereum used in the DApp ecosystem in 2019 was 1.8 billion, which is up 202% in terms of USD value. Of course, nothing is guaranteed in this world. As encouraging as some of those statistics may be, there are still challenges that lie ahead. Two of the big ones are interoperability and scalability. Those are covered here on finance.yahoo.com. Interoperability testnet launched by Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. We'll link to this article in the description below if you'd like to check it out. And you can also read this piece on the coinrepublic.com. They dare to ask the question, is Ethereum undervalued. I am not going to be a fence sitter on this issue. I'm going to come out and say it quite clearly. I think Ethereum is vastly undervalued. Don't forget, we once saw a $1,400 Ethereum price and that on its own, let's be honest, means nothing. However, when you consider the fact that eventually one day, hopefully they will solve these interoperability and scalability problems, you take that observation, you couple it with the observation that you have 359 of the biggest corporations in the world building on the Ethereum network. And I think you have an argument that Ethereum's best days are ahead. Just my opinion. Let us know what yours is in the description below. And even over the course of this video, I think it's worth updating our numbers on coinmarketcap.com because we are really moving. Right now, we are over $245 billion. Bitcoin really creeping up on that $9,000 mark. Let's see if we break through that resistance. $8,934 right now as we sign off. And that about wraps it up for today, everybody. Do be sure you're following us on all the regular social media channels and keep checking back into altcoinbuzz.io for all the latest. Go ahead, like, subscribe, share, and of course, hit the bell to receive notifications. Best of luck if you choose to invest. Tomorrow, we are giving away our crypto tag Zeus starter kit. Make sure you're eligible by liking all videos between both giveaways. Make sure you're subscribed to Altcoin Buzz on YouTube and comment. We will be selecting first a video and then a comment at random. Have a great Friday, everybody. A great end to your week, a great start to your weekend. And as always, we hope to see you again soon in our next video. Take care.